Good afternoon. This is TTT Live and TTT Live Online on Facebook. I'm DK Rosto with a COVID-19 review. Now, today, Thursday, May 21, marks the start of the second phase of government's lifting of COVID-19 restrictions. The lifting of restrictions began on May 10 with the conditional reopening of food establishments. Phase 2 was originally scheduled to begin on May 24, but was brought forward. From today, the manufacturing and construction sectors are back online, along with mechanic and tire shops. There have been no positive cases or new positive cases of COVID-19 reported in almost a month. And the promise has been that the phased reopening of the economy will progress once the figures hold steady. One COVID positive patient remains at the Cora Hospital. The patient is said to be low risk and stable. In its morning update, the Ministry of Health says that so far, a total of 2,795 samples have been sent for testing. 2,380 have been unique patient tests, with 415 repeated tests. The total number of positive cases remain at 116. There have been eight COVID-19 related deaths. And we're very happy to say that Trinidad and Tobago Association of Social Workers has graciously supplied two members of their executive today. Dr. Paulette Josling and Gina Malchan Bonas are sharing insight into the impact of COVID-19 on families and children and children in the education system. And of course, we put the broad outlier that this is from the perspective of the association. So we say good afternoon, ladies. Thank you very much for being here. And you want to... Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It sounds as though somebody has the TV on, you know. No, my TV is not on. Okay. No, no, no. All right. But... I, I, am, I am talking to my speaker, but it's, I'm, I have the TV on. Ah, okay. We'll be talking from your vehicle and don't have the don't have the radio on too too loud, please, if at all. But I want to start with no, asking. Bluetooth. I don't know if it's digest. Ah, okay. But what are some of the advantages for families for children during this period? Well, so... go ahead, please. And I'll ask. I'll ask. I'll start off with you, please, Doctor Jocelyn. Okay. So the positives for families at this time is that. Mrs. Malchon Bonus, would you add to that or qualify that in any way? That is the positive impact. Yes, please. You know what? Um, I, I, I endorse it fully because families are getting to spend quality time now with their families. They have parents are able at home assisting with so school activities, which is a plus for a lot of our students. You know, so I endorse that fully. I know some, some children don't see their parents during daytime at all because they've left so early and then they've, uh, they're coming back so late in the so evening. So late, that's exactly it, yes. You know. But what, what, are, what are some of the negative impacts that people can be experiencing during this period? And this is, when I say people, I mean specifically families, families and children. Yeah. But let me say that families definitely have an increased level of stress because you now have family members who have who have lost their jobs, um, less household income coming into the family. Um, families are fearful of what you know, what next, what step they should take. Um, children also have loss of classroom interaction. Um, you know, their social lives have changed dr dramatically. Recreational activities, you know, things like going to the movies and going to the beach, you know is really out of the question for them at this time. Not forgetting, too, that some of them have also lost loved ones. You understand? Family members. So that has a really negative impact. COVID has really impacted ne ne negatively on some of our families, definitely. Anything to add to that, Dr. Jocelyn? Well, I want to also add that some families also face a fear of the unknown. Some families are even afraid of the experienced eviction at times. That's how the association will come in. In terms of access to grants, the government has been able to help families access them. 
and we have been going to networking with other agencies in order to help the families at this pandemic period. Well, let me continue with that and ask, what are some of the services that the Association of Social Workers have been able to provide during this period? Well, at this time, we have a hotline, and we have um, already accessed about 100 calls that we do for free. And then during that period, persons uh, provide psychological support, and we assist family in accessing resources, and we provide intervention through like school social workers are also part of the membership. So students who are out of school and need to stay with by the social workers. But one of the challenges is that some people may not have Zoom, Skype, so we try to call them directly and, and assist them in any way that they can. These are some of the services that we are providing to students. Let's work with all the other agencies in order to this my better face at this time. I'll, I'll ask you to continue with that, but in a slightly different vein, Mrs. Malchon Bonas, in the sense that social workers have been on the ground doing work as well. What has the experience been like for membership in the association? Well, the, we, we have a broad membership base, and these are the people who function in different fields of social work. So we are able to advocate on behalf of our clients. We are able to you know, network with a lot of our social workers in the different social work fields, for example, school social workers, the medical field, you know, the psychiatric field, and the social workers continue to work with the students, you know, despite the little, um, you know, lack of resources some of them may have. Um, we have virtual sessions via Zoom, we do meet. So social workers, this association has been liaising with the social workers in order to, you know, assist wherever we could. And the social workers are doing a great job on the ground. How do social workers connect with families or with children? And I ask that because you say you have been doing work on the ground and you mm -hmm. have been putting in that work. But if you have, a, if you have the occasion or the situation of a family saying, okay, well, I want to get, I want to access the services of a social worker, what do they need to do to make that initial conversation and then start that ball rolling? Okay. Um, go ahead, Paulette. Dr. Jocelyn, we, we throw that, in, that ball into your court. Pardon? What does someone need to do to start the communication to access well, 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 help from a social worker? We have our hotline, which I will give to you after this program. We will share with you so you can share with your listeners before we continue by that. Call this on our hotline. We then redirect you to the right services that you require. So for instance, you call the hotline, and at this time you will need something in the, educa in the education system instead of the school social worker. So part of the organization, we will have school social workers who are also part of the association. So they are then able to speak to the families and find out what services are required. So that is one of the ways to be able to respond. I don't know if I actually want to add anything. And do you have that? Do you have that number to share with us now, Dr. Jocelyn? Sure. The, the number is four six six four nine three two five four five six. Four six six four nine three two eight zero three nine. So you can call any one of the numbers twenty four hours, and we will link you any necessary services that you may require. Okay. And lastly, before we go this afternoon. I'll, I'll start off with you, Ms. Gina, and then we'll go to Dr. Jocelyn. What has the experience been of the, of the social workers on the ground? Because, yes, you're putting in that work, but what are they feeling? What are they contending with? What are the emotions? What, are, what, is, what is the experience that you're getting from your membership? Well, at the end of the day, we have a job to perform. Our clients are caring professionals willing to volunteer their time and assist. Of course, you know, we have to go the extra mile as we have been doing in the past. This is no different. Um, this is a crisis that, you know, um, is the first time that we are experiencing this in our country. And we, we are equipped to do the task. And the, most of the social workers that I have spoken to, they are willing, they are able, and they are qualified enough to do the job. And they are happy to do so. 
All right, so just before we shift to Dr. Jocelyn, you'll correct me if I have those numbers wrong, right? 466-4932, that's 466-4932, as well as 372-8039, Those are the let numbers. Me correct, let me correct the first number. Please. The first number is 465-7932, that's the association number. Okay, 465-7932. As you can tell, I was one of those children. They used to say, like, stick break in your ears. But okay, we're no, fixing we that up. <laughs> the experience the experience that you're getting from your membership, Dr. Jocelyn. Dr. Jocelyn? Social workers are missing the public. There are people who are quite frustrated and very careful of the unknown. Social workers have been provided since this time memorial. I want to thank you for the recognition at this time, and I want to also recognize all the social workers who are in the vineyard, continue to toil. I wish to recognize them today and say good job. But I want to also say that when the challenges come along, force one another. So when a social worker is in the field and it becomes overwhelmed, you have each other to support them. You have families who this time really, really, really feel alone. And we are there now to pop up, provide the support. It can be quite frustrating at times, but we, we still continue to teach families and work as much as we can and advocate clients. All right, ladies, we want to thank you very much, Dr. Paulette Jocelyn and Mrs. Gina Malchan, bonus social workers, members of the executive of the Trinidad and Tobago Association of Social Workers for doing what you do. We turn now to some regional news. Jamaica's Ministry of Health and Wellness will provide an entertainment package and a wider variety of food to citizens in quarantine. Now, some of the 125 Jamaicans who returned home aboard a chartered flight from the UK have complained about the living conditions at the Bahia Principal, Principe Hotel. Now, during a media conference on Wednesday, it was announced that quarantined citizens would get improved food choices, regular counseling, and better entertainment options. Jamaica Prime Minister Andrew Holness has apologized to the quarantined citizens after they complained about poor quality food and alleged disrespectful treatment from staff and healthcare workers. Meanwhile, Barbados's tourism minister says the country remains in high demand as a destination for airlines and travelers. Minister Kerry Simmons said that air, airlines are keeping Barbados as a destination. He added that one airline wants Barbados to be the anchor of the resurgence in the Caribbean. The former West Indies skipper Sir Clive Lloyd is expressing caution on the proposed tour of England by the West Indies in July. Lloyd, the region's winningest captain, says people are still dying in England and describes the situation as difficult. His caution comes as the Windies and England hammer out the final details of a proposed biosecure three-test tour. Lloyd feels Cricket West Indies should listen to the medical experts and be guided by their advice. He also made a plea for the board to utilize the services of the past players to assist with some of the issues that are threatening the stability of the board and the game in the region. And that's what's trending on COVID-19. Remember, you can join us for live coverage on TTT, Talk City 91.1 FM, Sweet 100.1 FM, Next 99.1 FM, as well as on Facebook at TTT Live Online for all your COVID-19 updates. Thank you for joining us. On behalf of the TTT crew, I'm DK Rostar. Bye for now.